I'm for cowboy capitalism. I mean, I want free markets to solve too. the housing price problem. I Me really too. do. Jerry Bora, you're smiling. I'm for cowboy capitalism. But I want to say this. The subprime mortgage was essentially invented after the 1995 amendments to the Community Reinvestment Act, which put a gun to the head right. of all lenders, banks and non-banks, it said, you must, you must make subprime loans, below prime loans at favorable interest terms to low income people, to downright poor people, to Im immigrants, Can to I Latinos, etc. No, I want to finish this point. Sorry. I want to get this out on the table. It's been bugging me for a long time. Jerry Boer is the only one who got this story right. This meant that, in fact, if these lenders did not make these subprime loans, their business plans would be disrupted. They couldn't acquire. Right. They couldn't merge. They couldn't go into new markets. And it gave inordinate power to local community groups like the Acorn Group to essentially rat out the lender and tell the Fed and the control of the currency that you guys, they're not doing what you want them to do. So guess what? With the era of easy money, that was like pouring gasoline and lighting the match to the Community Reinvestment Act, which set the stage for these unbelievably yeah. stupid Can I please uh, subprime mortgages. Yes, okay, please respond. You. First of all, the notion and no one, that... And when that gets repealed, Jared, when the Community Reinvestment Act gets repealed, then I'm willing to talk about some different regulations. So, so it's not not Bear Stearns that got us into the mess. That's right. And, 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 and the shadow financial system. It's the community organizers at Acorn. <laughs> and yes, and going with now, the community okay. reinvestment now, let me act, say, which now, gave let me them the power the to force let me banks say this. to you make and loans Jerry, they shouldn't say, have made. Like, That's <laughs> the point. Bear Stearns is way downstream. Bear you Stearns and Jerry, is you way and Jerry. downstream on this. Larry, Those loans please. would never have been made if the community reinvestment bank I don't didn't disagree. force them to it. You and That's Jerry a key have a good point. You and Jerry have a point and you're right to bring it up. The problem with your, your point is that you're not going far enough. The Federal Reserve, by mandate, is supposed to oversee these subprime markets. And when the, the, the good, great, late Ned Gramlich was nudging Alan Greenspan to take a look at the excesses in this markets, he ignored that. And so the, the, they, they were asleep at the regulatory switch. That's oh the God. other side of the equation. All right, Laffer, what did I hear? Say something. I don't think it's correct. I mean, basically what I think is happening here, it is the regulations. It's what happens in California when you have all of these California regulations that cause builders right. to start eight years ahead of time before they really can build a house and have it delivered. They're way out of sync, and that's where you really get the subprime market, is you just had a real mesh between demand and supply because of regulations. I mean, Joe B., I didn't want to cut you off because you're downstream, and I agree with you. Wall Street made huge mistakes, Joe. But the creation of these subprime mortgages is upstream. And that came from this terrible regulation called community reinvestment. Except now, that, except that 20% of the point. housing market was speculators having nothing to do with the poor, and they were taking that's advantage right. of no, the system. That is correct. And that, I that agree. exacerbated I agree. the problem so that now I agree. you'll have 30% of the mortgage pools underwater by year end this year, mm -hmm. which is not just the poor people. You know, people. you can leverage. No, no, the poor people were... Uh, bit players in this game. That was an excuse. Once the well, then, then you've got to take off the table the community banking regulation as a prime driver behind the crisis. No, no. Community reinvestment was for big banks, too. Big banks, big brokerage firms, and that's what triggered this whole... We never even heard yeah, of subprime Yeah, but Larry, what about all-state lending? I mean, it had nothing to do with the subprime market. That's still a major problem. We've got to get out. We've got to get out. Hang on. We're going to continue this. So everybody's going to stick around. Too often, we've excused and even embraced an ethic of greed corner cutting, insider dealing, things that have always threatened the long-term stability of our economic system. Too often, we've lost that common stake in each other's prosperity. There's nothing new coming out from the Obama or the Clinton camp. It is regressive taxation. It means after-tax returns are going to go down, mm. not up. And they refuse to address the question of broken systems, both for Medicare and Social Security. The solutions they offer, ironically enough, is to expand them, mm. not to reformulate them. And not to be brutally honest with Main Street and Wall Street, is that we cannot continue to have these kinds of programs as constructed. So unfortunately, there's nothing new but a lot of rhetoric. And the clear thing here, the temptation is, let's blame the party in power. Mm. Let's blame all the problems on them so that I can get elected. Not that I have solutions, but now I can redistribute the way I want to. Look, Joe, you're great, we by the way. That was no, wonderful. No, we got, I'm sorry. we got to leave it there. To be continued, gentlemen. Progressive, Rafford, Jared regressive. Bernstein, Joe Badpaglia, Jerry Boyer. Thanks to everybody. Up next, two big policy speeches under his belt. The McCain surge continues.